Welcome everyone. In this video I'll show you how to use the tethered capture feature in Lightroom. With this feature you would shoot with your camera connected to your computer with the USB cable that comes with your camera or a longer version of it and your photos would automatically get imported into Lightroom as you shoot. This way you can immediately judge focus and other elements on your larger computer screen. You could also add keywords and edit as you go along. Now tethered capture is most commonly used in a studio when you're shooting models or products, but you could also use it in any situation where it's convenient for you to have your camera connected to your computer and where it would be useful to get immediate feedback on the larger computer screen. Shooting macro flowers in your house is another example, or even landscape photography depending on the situation. Now if you're on a Mac using Sierra or High Sierra and Lightroom 5, Tethered Capture won't work. It was broken with the introduction of those operating systems. It's been fixed starting with Lightroom 6.7, CC 2015.7, and of course Lightroom Classic. Now this feature is only supported for certain Canon, Nikon, and Leica cameras you'll find a list of what cameras are supported with your version of Lightroom out at this URL. I'll put this link in the table of contents PDF that comes with my video series. So scroll down to the tethered capture video in that list. Let's go back to Lightroom and I'll show you how this works. Before we get into it, I'll mention that I want the photos that I'm going to shoot this morning to go within a 2018 folder Within Photos, go here. All right, to start Tethered Capture, plug your camera into your computer using the USB cord that came with your camera. Turn your camera on and go up to File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. Now Lightroom will put the images that you shoot in a folder with the session name. I'm going to shoot my dog this morning, or rather photograph her, so I'll use Lucy. Segmenting photos by shots would allow you to have multiple subfolders within the session folder. If, for example, you're shooting different models, you could have a folder for each model. I'll keep this checked so you see what it looks like. Next, you can choose to rename your files as they're being imported. The session name sequence template draws on the session name from up here, but you could choose any renaming template. If you don't want your files renamed, Choose File Name, and you'll get the file names that your camera generates. Next, we'll specify the destination or the location that the session folder will go into. I'll click on Choose. I'll go to Pictures, then Photos go here. I don't have a 2018 folder yet, so I'll click on New Folder, and I'll create this. And then I'll click Choose. Next. Just like you could during a regular import, you can add your photos to a collection, either an existing one or a new one. You can add your copyright or other metadata preset, and then keywords that would apply to all of the images. I'll click on OK, and I'm prompted for the initial shot name, because I've chosen to segment photos by shots. We'll call this Lucy Asleep. And I'll click on OK, and I get the tethered capture bar here. Now it says no camera detected because my camera went to sleep, so I'll press on the shutter button halfway to wake it up. Now it detects my camera. Now this is very temperamental, and issues with it not detecting your camera are pretty common. I can't go through all of the troubleshooting steps in this video, but I will refer you to a troubleshooting document that Adobe has put out. So again, I'll put this link in the table of contents PDF. All right, my camera is detected. I see the session name, the shot name, a summary of my camera settings, and then I could choose to apply a develop preset if I wanted. Now I can trigger capture with the button here, or I can trigger it on my camera. I'll use my camera. And there's the image right away. I'll double click on it to go to loop view. 
You can drag the bar down to get it out of the way. You can also make it smaller by holding down the Alt or the Option key, which turns the X here into a Minimize button. Click on that. Then you would hold the Alt to the Option key down again to get the plus icon and click on that to expand it. You can hide this either by going up to File, Tethered Capture, Hide Tethered Capture window, or you can use Control or Command T to hide and then redisplay the bar. But from here, I could zoom in. I could add keywords as I go. I could edit as I go, etc. Let me move the bar out of the way so we can see the folders panel. I'll make this wider so you can see that I have my session folder and then my shot folder within that. Now, for photographing my dog, I really don't need all these subfolders. What I would probably do instead to make my session name folder consistent with what I've done elsewhere is name my session today's date 01-22 and then Lucy. Of course, I could right click and rename it at any point. Now, if you have a Nikon camera and you trigger capture from within Lightroom here, then you can't take another shot until that file is saved to your computer. If you use the button on your camera, though, instead, you won't have to wait. To my understanding, that's only an issue with Nikon. Nikon also doesn't write to the memory card as you're shooting tethered. Canon does, so you get that backup. If you're having trouble with Nikon tethered capture, try taking out the memory card since it's not using it. I'm not sure, frankly, whether Leica writes to the memory card. I'll take another shot here. As you shoot, Lightroom automatically moves to showing you the most recent shot. If you don't want that to happen, you can go up to File, Tethered Capture, and Deselect Auto Advanced Selection. I won't do that though. Now I want a new subfolder, a new shot. So I'll click where it says Lucy Asleep, and I'll type in Lucy Awake. And I'll click on OK. Lightroom immediately creates that new folder. And I'll take another shot. Lucy, look! And I'll move the bar down. Obviously, I need to work on focus, but at least Lightroom's doing its job. Now, I almost forgot to mention that if you're shooting without this bar displayed, I'll do Command-T to hide it. You can initiate a new shot by using the shortcut command or control shift T. I'll cancel that. And I'll do command or control T to get the bar back. To close tethered capture, you can click on the X here, or you can go up to file, tethered capture, stop tethered capture. If you're shooting and tethered capture freezes up or it suddenly doesn't recognize your camera, try turning the camera on and off. If that doesn't work, close tethered capture and reopen it. If that doesn't work, unplug the USB cable and then plug it back in. And then, if you still have issues, refer to that troubleshooting document. This concludes the lesson on tethered capture. If you've enjoyed this video, check out my full Lightroom Fundamentals and Beyond video series. It's 22 hours of training on 101 videos. Also, please show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. That tells everyone that my videos are worth watching. Thank you. I'm Laura Shue.